episode of PTL's Garage. We're going to show you how to push out um, or press out uh, kind of Mark II control arm bushings. This method also works for Mark IVs and Mark III's. I never done it with Mark I's, but this method works really well. So, if you don't have a press, it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight press. Um, bought it for 120 bucks. I've had it for almost six years with no issues. This is also a Harbor Freight from Vice. Paid about 50 bucks for it. Works really, really good. Bought the warranty on it, so I just swap it out every couple of years. Doesn't cost me any money, so I can't complain. So, first things first, get yourself a control arm. Give me a second here and grab it. And with the control arm, you'll see here, this is the bushing we're going to press out with the vise. This is the bushing that you're going to press out with the press. Um, so here, it doesn't matter which way it comes out, just make sure you, uh, you keep it towards the edge, not in here because it curves, so it'll catch on and it won't work really well. So what I did is that this is an uh, Duralast socket here, and this is a 1 and 7 16 socket right there, if you guys can see that. It fits perfect right around the bushing, no issues, and then use the smallest and shortest socket you got. What you're going to do, now if you have a table vise, this will work just as well. Just make sure you have the space for it. And then get a good little, get on there nice and tight, and just start pressing it down. And then it will just pop right up. It takes a little while because you got to give it a couple of turns. So we get you guys a closer look here. Give me a second. I want you guys to have a nice view of this of what's happening. Okay, so now you guys see that right here. The socket's going in, and the bushing's going into the actual um, other socket. And that way it can be pushed all the way through. And once it starts actually pushing in, it goes it goes rather quickly. And then that's it. Pull this one out. And then just... You can see the, the bushing's almost 100% out. So what you have to do next is grab... I grab a set of a uh, vice grips and point down. Put it on the floor and twist. Just like that, you get it out. Pretty easy. Reverse the process to install the new bushings. Very, very easy. Um, I'll film that too, but just to give you guys a heads up. So that one's done. Now we're going to, I already did the other one, so now we're going to actually press out the bushings on this, uh, on the control arm. So let's get ready. Okay, so I had to figure out how to pull out the control arm bushing, so now I know what to do. So on these control arms, there's a top and a bottom, okay? And what I mean a top and a bottom, the bushing itself, let me see if I can show you guys, has a top and a bottom. Uh, okay, I, I think I threw it away already. Oh no, here it is. So here you go. These are Mark II bushings, and you'll notice there's a lip on there. Mark IV bushings have a lip on the top and the bottom. You just push them through, and then they, they press on. If they're poly, if they're factory, they don't have this lip. They just go in. On Mark IIs, there's a flat side and a curved side on the actual uh, control arm. Uh, the flat side is where this bushing gets pushed into. And then the curved side is pretty much where it comes out of, um, or ends at, because it's tapered. 
so that's the bushing only goes in one way it cannot go in any other way if you're using factory bushings if you're upgrading the polyurethane you can probably push them all the way through but I don't think it's the right thing to do um, if you're using factory bushings there are markings on here for directions uh, which direction the bushing has to be pushed in because of uh, either camber or caster um, adjustment or setting so remember uh, if you look at your control arm all the way uh, let's see here if I can show you guys maybe there's a top and bottom I don't see any markings here no no markings on this control arm so I guess the best way to tell is Oh, I wish I can give you guys an indicator right here, but there isn't one. Well, best way you can tell is if you have old <laughs> control arms, whichever bushing is actually pushed in on the flat side, make sure you repeat it. Make sure you remember where it was placed at, because more than likely you have the original ones. If aftermarkets are put in, most aftermarket uh, control, uh, polyurethane bushings don't matter their direction, because they're meant to be set in one spot. Okay, so let's get this guy pushed out. So, for pressing it out, you have to remember, you have to use this part of the arm, the really strong part. On uh, Mark IVs, you can use the edges, but on Mark II control arms, you have to use this actual brace right here on the sides. So, I'm going to get you guys an up-close view here. So, uh, using, if you remember the socket that we used to push out the bushing, use that same socket to actually push out this bushing as well. Uh, it works beautifully. So you want to use as much as the arm on the actual press itself. And you'll see right there. And make sure you line it up as as like as straight as possible. Now, before you even go all the way down, make sure that your path or blockway uh, for the bushing to come out is clear and then start going down get a little bit of pressure started and then double check it one more time that way everything's clear on that side if it looks good press it Not working. And this usually happens because I don't have as much uh, meat on here. So we gotta get a little bit more control arm here. Sorry about that, guys. That's loud. this again that should be nope you'll see it's pushing out oh, the other one went so smooth It's only the left side right here on this control arm that I'm having an issue with. The other side's going down nicely. Let's see if this works. And this is the issue with pressing stuff. Not everything goes according to plan. Mark 4 bushings, man, I can push out with it like a champ. Sucks. I hate Mark II controllers. I really do. 
should be not difficult for any reason. Do you need me to move? Okay, so the issue that we are going to have or you're going to have when you press out these bushings, um, pretty much you repeat the process that I showed you, put it on, line it up, but you'll see how it bends. It gets the corners. I mean, I don't know if this structural portion matters as much besides the sides right here. But when you get it down and try to support it, it's going to bend these corners. So maybe if you guys can find something that can fit around here larger than this hole, maybe an old bearing, uh, like a bearing housing, put it on here. That should give you the stability that you need to square it off and then you can press it out. Um, I don't know. I mean, I got it out, but with a little bit of damage, I'm hoping this is not going to affect it very much. But we're going to go now and actually press in the new ones now. So let's get to work, guys. So this is a Prothane full um, polyurethane kit. Uh, so these are the control arm ones. These are the fronts, and these are the little insert ones for the control arms. Uh, you press these in first, and then you put in the metal sleeve afterwards. Uh, they give you pretty much polyurethane grease here. Uh, you need this to lube up the whole entire bushing so when you install them, they don't squeak when you're driving. So, let's get to work and get these installed. On the uh, polyurethane bushing, there's really no distinct side um, of the bushing at all in comparison to the factory ones. Um, so when you guys install these, just press them in. Uh, just use the press in side because like I was telling you guys there's two sides to this um, let me see here so there's a, f a tapered side and a round side um, this is the actually the press press in side so which has the flat surface the other side is kind of tapered a little bit and has a lip so we're gonna go from here down and, um, good thing is that we don't have to worry about we just got to push them in Get your grease here, pour some on your finger, put it around the bushing itself. A um, little bit goes a long way. You can slather it all you want, it's not going to affect it. Um, just, um, what's it called, clean off the residue when you're done. This just helps to do the install a lot easier. And if you can, do a little bit on the inside of the actual control arm here. So you're going to do that. Now as a recommendation, get a piece of wood. A little 2 by 4 to press this in. This way it goes in and down a lot, even, a lot more even. Now, the trick to these guys, because what's going to happen is that they're going to slide um, because of the fact you put some grease on here. So, the reason why I use a 2x4, it kind of does a better job in, um, I guess, uh, displacing the, the pressure here. And it goes down a lot more even. And you'll see just by looking at that how that's just going in nice and even and as I said just push it all the way down it'll do it'll it'll um, center itself on its own so it's not a big deal if it goes in a little sideways and it's the beauty of polyurethane push it all the way down once you have it down back it out and then Make sure the whole bushing is out on both sides. You'll see that completely out. Last thing to do is get your metal insert. Now on the manual, it's stating that you do not use the Mark II OEM metal sleeve. Uh, the reason why there's a metal sleeve on the original control arms it's because the original control arms, uh, the hole wasn't 100%, um, what's it called, uh, perfect. 
If it doesn't go all the way in, just use your wood. It doesn't require much pressure, you just gotta make sure it just goes all the way down. And that is the install for the control arm one. I know they get ugly because your hands get dirty. Don't worry about it. Clean them off after you're done. Um, so now we're going to show you how you, uh, we're going to do the other one, and then I'll show you guys how to do the the small one on the control arm. Well, super cool news. Uh, pretty much <laughs> the uh, small control arm bushings can be actually be pushed in by hand, and I'll show you in just a moment. Um, just gotta get some grease on here. Remember, you always gotta grease these suckers up, no matter how easy they are to install, because they will squeak on you. Uh, I don't know how many times I tell people, did you put your grease on it? What grease? I didn't check. The, oh, that little packet didn't know what that was for. It's for these suckers to not squeak on you. Alright. So. It's pretty straightforward. Push it in by hand. Just like that. Your metal sleeve. Make sure you get grease on the inside too. And then just slide that sucker in. If it was that easy. If not, good old vice is here for a reason. These aren't like Mark IV control arm bushings. We have to actually press them right through. This is this is a godsend in comparison to the polyurethanes for a Mark IV. I spent a fraction of the amount of time installing this. So there you go. Bushing installed. Repeat the process on the other arm. Call it a day. Thanks again for watching this episode of Pinch Al's Garage and how to do Mark II control arm bushings. And stay tuned for a lot more because we still got to do the sway bars. We got to do the. Um, we got to put in install our SolarWorks coilovers. We got to put rear bushings, front bushings. Uh, new bushings on the rear beam. I mean, we have a huge list of things to do. So, don't fret. Enjoy. And see you guys next time. Peace out, everyone.